What's going on, everybody? Jen Mint here, and today we're going to talk about every Absolute Edition from DC Comics released so far. You know, I got this idea because Jake from Brave and the Boys, he made a video posting his top 10 favorite Absolutes, and somebody commented on, on the post, aren't there only like 10 to begin with? He replied to them, there's 57 Absolutes. So I was like, you know what? We got to get Jake on the channel, and let's talk about all 57 Absolutes, plus the canceled ones and the upcoming. Hey, what's up, everyone? Jake here from The Brave and the Boys. I'm excited to be here doing a video with Jim Mint, someone that I used to look up to on the YouTube community, someone that inspired me to do better, and it's an honor to be here talking about my favorite format of books. Now, since both of us work with Organic Prize Books, we had to do a giveaway for this video. So we're going to give away any absolute edition of your choice, as long as it's in stock or JP can order it. All you got to do is like this video, be subscribed to this channel, subscribe to Jake's channel, Brave and the Boys, and leave a comment on this video. I want you to comment, what's your favorite Absolute Edition? And stick around to the end of the video. We'll give you the details on how you enter the giveaway. Dude, can I win the giveaway? <laughs> no. We're going to start with America's Best Comics. These are the Alan Moore Absolute Editions, and we're going to start with... And I like how you group these together. I love this series, Promethea Volumes 1 through 3. Arguably one of the best looking absolutes. So J.H. Williams III is one of the best artists out there. His work on Sandman Overture, his work on Promethea, he mixes medias and the art is like second to none. And I feel like it's a really personal story to Alan Moore. Like he's like a wizard in real life. So obviously a story about magic is going to be deeply personal to him. Yeah, he deals with big life and death type of things, which I'm a huge fan of. This was my first experience with J.H. Williams III. And now you see his stuff, you can spot it a mile away. He's got such a distinct, like, painted collage style of art that really lends well to this book. Yeah, there's one moment in particular where she's, like, walking through different, like, levels of reality, and it goes from being, like, comic book drawn all the way to being real-life photos. So it's just, like, crazy how he plays with the medium. The next one from Alan Moore from America's Best, we have Top 10, which is an absolute that I did own. I never got around to reading it, and I ended up selling it. So Top 10... I hadn't really heard of a lot of, but I know DC recently came out with a compendium, which is a great way to collect it. But the I finally got a good deal on it, and it is an amazing story. It's actually the book I'm reading currently. There's a bunch of superheroes around the world, and they all get corralled into one city, and they're stuck there. So they all have to like build a society, but everyone has superpowers. So if everyone has superpowers, no one's really a superhero. So if you're a speedster, you're a delivery man. You know, if you're a precog, like you can see the future, you can't work in like stocks. So basically like it's a so society of superhero people and it takes place. It's like a gritty cop procedural. So it starts with like the plucky young recruit who's like first day on the job and she's partnered with the old grizzled guy. And it's just like, what if superheroes had their own society? You know, that sounds a lot like what he did toward the end of Miracle Man. All right, guys, the last series from Alan Moore, we have League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. They made three volumes, technically one and two, and then the Black Dossier. Yes, so League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, I don't own the first and second one. The problem with these American Best Absolutes is they're some of the most limited, and they haven't reprinted any of them. The only one I have is Black, Black Dossier, which was created because Alan Moore didn't want his artist Kevin O'Neill to be out of work in between the volumes. So it's kind of like a compendium. I flipped through it and I made this joke to my friend. I was like, it's what you want an absolute for. It's all like words, like an actual book and orgy pictures in 3D. There's 3D glasses. So definitely <laughs> I, I, it's, you cannot read Black Dossier without reading one and two. I do not know what's going on, but I hope to get volumes one and two someday. Yeah, I never got around to reading this. I did own these at one point, and you own like almost every single Absolute Edition. How many are you sure? Like seven of them? I'm missing seven, yes. You know what's funny about League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? I, I haven't read it. I just remember the movie with Sean Connery back in the day, way before YouTube and all that, and I dug it even back then. I think that was Sean Connery's last uh, live role or last role. But yeah, so the weird thing about that is it's like, he pretty much created like a Justice League, you know, cinematic universe, but they're all old Victorian characters that had entered the public domain. So it's like Sherlock Holmes and old like superheroes and stuff like that, like literary heroes. So it's kind of like a nerdy Justice League. So next up, we're jumping over to the Wildstorm universe, which was started by Jim Lee and as an independent company. And then it did become a publishing imprint of DC. So Wildstorm, I, I never really read them before, but this year I've tackled a bunch of them. So 
they're like really it's a really cool universe like there's amazing stories uh, you know that are both in absolute and not in absolute in the wildstorm universe but it's like gritty real world stuff it's awesome up first we have the authority yeah speaking of that so i owned the authority omnibus i think were there two volumes or just no just the one right there's one omnibus or two absolutes so I ended up selling those, getting the omnibus. I read like three quarters of it on the way to New York Comic Con and on the way back, but I never finished it. I really dug what I read. I mean, it's what you would expect out of Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch. Oh, yeah, of course. So there's two volumes of The Authority because Warren Ellis did it with Brian Hitch. And then down the road in volume two, Mark Miller took it up with Frank quietly. So I've only read The Authority volume one. I've started volume two, but it's it's almost like it's trying too hard to be Warren Ellis, if that makes any sense. Like Mark Miller really tries to be edgy and the authority is an edgy world. It's really like, what if superheroes were real question? And I think that the Warren Ellis stuff that I read is the better half of it. Yeah, exactly. Think like the justice league watchtower, but it's in a gritty world, similar to the boys or similar to Mark Miller's ultimates. And kind of in Tone with that is Planetary, which is the next Absolute Edition. Another one that I believe I own the Absolutes, but I definitely got rid of them for the Omnibus. I read and reviewed that, and it's that same kind of vibe, same kind of feel as the Authority. So I actually like Planetary a lot more. So what I love about Planetary is it's almost... One, it's an amazing absolute. It used to be two volumes, two absolutes, and then they reprinted it as one giant absolute. And like it's a thick, chonky uh absolute so what i love about planetary is it's a love letter to comic books as a whole so some issues will be fantastic for ripoffs i don't want to say ripoffs they're like homages it's like he writes about you know there's batman superman wonder woman like you know homages and there's sandman everything you can imagine green hornet like comics from the old every era of comics are celebrated and it's one self-contained story there is a batman crossover and there is a jla crossover and one crossover with the authority. And then the last one is by the OG, the founder of the Wildstorm imprint. We've got Jim Lee's Wildcats. So I have don't own this technically. I just bought it from JP's personal collection. It was out of print. and He gave me a great deal on it. Everything, every person I've heard talk about this book says it's a terrible written story. But the Jim Lee art is amazing. So if you have to read it, read it in the absolute where you can just appreciate the art and skip the words. Because I heard it is not a great story. Yeah, I really could never get into Wildcats or Youngbloods. When it came down to like those original image days, I really could only rock with Spawn. Mm, that makes sense. You are a Spawn guy. Definitely a Spawn guy. All right, guys. Enough of those kind of niche indie versions of these absolutes. Let's get right into the DC. But let's get into some DC Black Label. Yeah, so I did DC Vertigo and Black Label as one section the reason why is sometimes they've been caught like you'll get the book the old first printing and it'll say vertigo and then you'll get in the same one volume two and it's black label so it was just you know, black label just wants to be vertigo you know yeah thanks for clarifying i didn't even think of that because it does say dc vertigo but i'm like you i think vertigo i think black label the if black label has taken over the vertigo imprint uh we have sandman the what is it seven volumes six or seven volumes they have out there seven so there's sandman one through five the first four absolutes of sandman are going to contain the 75 issue run of sandman then you have volume five which is kind of cool it's some side spinoff stories there's like one there's like a story that you get told in both like a regular like picture book as well as the comic book form but then you have my personal favorite which is overture overture is with jh williams the third like there's parts where you're flipping out page upon page upon page of this absolute like it's it's like four page splash pages. It's the best art I've ever seen. And then you have death, which is some stories that focus on his sister, the the embodiment of death. I can never decide which was the best constructed absolute edition. It's got to be between Sandman and Preacher. They both give each other a run for their money. I did end up selling these again in favor of those omnibus, which are three volumes. You really only need the first four, like you said, but then you're missing out on the J.H. Williams the third goodness. So I'm pretty famous on my channel for how many versions of Sandman I own. Uh, I famously did a video uh, every format of Sandman ever to compare them. I even have that massive set that's like the big helmet with the leather book. So I love Sandman. So for me, I think Sandman is my preferred absolute, but the preacher absolutes are gorgeous. They look like Bibles, which is just so sacrilegious. That's what I always say. And they have the gold trim. The gold is what sets it off for me on there. I definitely recommend Sandman. It's a great read. And I love the show, especially that death episode. 
Oh, amazing. This doesn't go under the America's best category because Alan Moore wrote this before. It's one of his earlier works, Absolute V for Vendetta. This one was one that was given to me by our sponsors, or Organic Price Books, so shouts out to them. And I have to say, I haven't seen the movie, and I read V for Vendetta going in blind, not knowing anything about the story. And it was deaf. I felt like, okay, so you can enjoy it. It's amazing. There's awesome moments. But there's some context that I feel like you don't get if you didn't live under, like, Margaret Thatcher's England in the 80s. Like, it is a very British book. Like, I almost felt like it was a tad too British for me. But it's all about, like, toppling tyranny and, like, rebelling in anarchy. It's like an anarchist book, like, to the very core. And it is an excellent story. And it I've heard it's way heavier than the movie. Yeah, I enjoyed it. But for me, the art and the colors didn't really do it for me. It's a very kind of plain color spread. I think each page has like its own hue. So you have like a bluish page, uh, a peach page, pink and all that. I didn't love it, but it's still a book that you got to read and get it under your belt just for the culture. Oh, yeah. Moving on, we have not Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. We'll get to that. But we have Swamp Thing by Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson, the OG material. For me, I was doing a, a stream with Comic Tom and Fire Guy Ryan when they were promoting Crashdown last year. And I'm looking at Ryan's background, and I see four Swamp Thing absolutes. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute. I thought there was just three Swamp Thing absolutes. I didn't realize they closed the gap. So this is the early stuff that predates Alan Moore. And to be honest... Not super necessary. It's spooky and it's good, but you if you're going to only read one Swamp Thing run, read the Alan Moore run. Exactly. I mean, this is just the original stuff, the first appearance, House of Secrets 92, but like we mentioned, Alan Moore's three-volume Swamp Thing absolute series. I think it's one of my favorite stories of all time, man. Alan Moore does an incredible job on this book. Oh, of course. Um, what I will say, though, about Swamp Thing, there was a little bit of controversy around it for two reasons. The first reason they did a lot of absolutes will go back and do recolorings to bring it up to a better format, such as Watchmen. And a lot of people did not like the recoloring of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. So that is a little bit of controversy. There also was horrible binding issues on the first printing of volume one so make sure that you don't get the original printing of volume one because a majority of them had spine issues yeah that's right i always forget about the recoloring because i experienced a lot of these stories in this format for the first time so i never really had the ogs to kind of go off of but having seen them a lot of times i do prefer that older style especially with killing joke which we'll get to sometime on this list so next up we have the other one that's on your mind for the best crafted absolute and that is preacher Preacher is crazy. So my experience with Preacher first was the TV show. And let me tell you, that TV show went places I didn't think you could go. It's nothing compared to the books. The books go way further and way more crazy from the very first issue. And if your only experience is the show, you got to read the books. And honestly, the absolutes are the way to go. They are gorgeous. So just want to show the spine. This is what we were talking about. This looks like it looks like a Bible, like a really expensive Bible. And uh, Preacher is the story of a preacher who gets, I guess, I don't want to say possessed, but his his soul combines with something called the word of God, which is the hybrid of an angel and a demon. And he can command anybody to do anything with something called the voice of God. So it's the story yeah. of the preacher, his ex-girlfriend and a vampire trying to hunt down God to say, why would you abandon us? Exactly. And I love how they do it in the story when he uses the voice of God. They use the, they make the text read, I believe. And it's like whoever he's talking to has to obey him. So I've only read volume one and two. I haven't finished it because it's heavy, man. It's like it's violent. It's graphic. It's heavy. And like, I feel like I need some like palate cleansers in between sometimes. And it's witty and it's funny. The vampire character, he's like this kind of drug addict guy. I mean, it's an amazing story. I experienced this for the first time via the Absolute Editions, but it was way before the show came out. The show, in my opinion, did not do it justice whatsoever. I don't even recall anything of the show. I, I was so disappointed. I love the story so much. I did end up selling them in favor of the Omnibus again. I was building up an Omnibus collection. Jake's more so building up the Absolute collection. But both of these formats you can pick up from our sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. We mentioned we're doing a giveaway. Again, we'll give you the details at the end of this video. But if you're looking to purchase any absolutes, omnibus, any kind of collected editions, it's OrganicPriceBooks.com. They have amazing packaging. Your books will arrive in great condition. Super fast shipping. You can pre-order and you can save $2 on every order by using code GEMMINT at checkout. Yeah, so we also want to shout 
know Organic Price Books TikTok. I'm a part of that. So I'm a YouTuber primarily, but we're working really hard to grow their TikTok. So we do giveaways on that as well for gift cards and things like that. So go ahead and give that a follow. All right, guys, moving on to the next Absolute Edition. This is one that I didn't remember until I just saw it on this slide. The Absolute Day Tripper. This is by Gabriel Ba and Fabio Moon. And I never got a chance to read this one before I did my Absolute Purge. It is on a list probably of five absolutes I would never sell. So what I usually tell people is absolutes are huge and giant. So you want to see that bombastic action. Day Tripper is the story of the son of a famous writer who writes obituaries. And it tells moments in his life, like impactful moments, moments of love, of loss, when he's young, when he's a child, when he's old. And at the end of each issue, spoiler alert, he dies. But over the course of the book, you get to see what makes us human, why life is worth living. And it's just a deep meditation on life. Man, that does sound good. Moving on to the next series of Absolute Editions, we're talking the three-volume set by Warren Ellis, Trans Metropolitan. So this I haven't read. The reason why is because volume three has been out of print for so long, and they keep doing, like right now, they'll print volume one. You're like, okay, cool. Then they print volume two, and you're like, okay, cool. And then on the solicits right now, they're like, we're going back to volume one. And it's like they keep reprinting one and two over and over again. They need to print three. There's not an omnibus. And I would just really like to start reading when I have all of them. Now, this was one that I did get a chance to read while I owned them. And I remember being a little bit let down at the time. I think there was just so much hype in the omnibus and collected edition community surrounding it that the expectations were too high. Looking back at it, though, I do have fond memories of it. This little self-contained world. It's very edgy. And people still watch this video, my reviews of this to this day. I recently just got a comment on it. So people are actively searching Transmetropolitan. Personally, I hope they make an omnibus so that I can put this back in my collection. I want that volume three. Please reprint it. <laughs> Next book on the list. Man, this is also an absolute edition turned Omni. So I went with the omnibus format. But my first time reading this and experiencing Why the Last Man was via the three absolute set. So this is another one I have to give a shout out to JP for sending me. I haven't read them yet. I know it's the story of basically something called the gender side where all the men in the world, whether it's like an animal or a human, they all die except for one man and his monkey. So the world goes post-apocalyptic quickly. And I've heard it's a fantastic story. Yorick is the last man. And this is another situation where the show didn't even scratch the surface. The only complaint I have on this story, which was beautifully drawn and written, is that the ending was just super rushed. Oh, I, I heard it's, I heard it doesn't even make sense. Like it's like a really big letdown. So that's why I like, but I heard it's a great journey. So that's why I'm like, I should read it. I have all three absolutes, but like uh, telling me the ending's not great. I've heard that from a lot of people that doesn't in, imbue me with confidence. You know, I think it's still worth the read though. It's a beautiful story. The ending is kind of just like how Robert Kirkman ended the walking dead. Like so mm. abrupt. Let me just flash forward and tell you what happens at the end. And it was still kind of touching and heartwarming at the end. So it's worth the read. All right, guys, moving on to some Batman goodness. We got Jeff Johns, Jason Fabok, Batman, Three Jokers. This one isn't in our Batman section, which we'll have later on because this was a black label book. Three Jokers is a book that I was like, ah, I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. It's three issues. It's too small. It's too small. But that Jason Fabugart is amazing. I think you did an awesome overview on this book also, if I remember correctly. Uh, I did a video on it why I think it's really misunderstood. I think it's a deeply misunderstood book about how our heroes have scars, both emotionally and, you know, figuratively, but it's also about how I think it almost makes the killing joke better. I think the killing joke hasn't aged super well and three jokers makes it a better story. If you read it. Yeah. I'm on the team. That's a big fan of this book and the killing joke. I think they made this, the Canon Joker origin or they made killing joke Canon one of the two. But yeah, it's less about the three Jokers and more about the three members of the Bat family. You have uh, Jason Todd, Bruce Wayne, and Barbara Gordon, and how the Joker has affected them personally and how they deal with all the trauma with amazing, beautiful artwork and Jeff Johns writing, which just flows so nice. So Scarlet, this is an absolute that has kind of been out of print for a while, but it's never got to crazy prices. I just sniped an eBay bid on it a few days ago, so it's shipping. It's Brian Michael Bendis. Technically, I have to say it's not Vertigo or Black Label. It's another imprint called Jinx World made by Bendis, but I didn't think it needed its own section. I don't know anything about it other than it's Bendis and Maliv, which are a powerhouse team. They worked on Daredevil together, and I'll pretty much read anything they do. 
Yeah, it's Brian and Michael Bendis, but it's also one that I did own it, and I just never got around to reading it at the time. And again, I did a big absolute purge. I was running out of space. I was wanting to convert more to Omnibus, so never got a chance to read this one. I should have been your friend during that purge, man. I feel like I would have came out came out lucky. All right, guys, on to the big section here. We're talking Batman, and we're going to start with Batman Year One by Frank Miller. I mean, Year One needs no introduction. I own it in, I think, four different formats. I'm going to own it in a couple more formats later this year. But Year One in the absolute format is special for a main reason. So it was originally printed on old newspaper papering when it came out and then was redone. And you get both versions of the book. So you can read it how it was originally, like the historical way, and you can read it the redone way. My favorite part in the whole book is the opening of the book where you have Bruce Wayne on a private jet into Gotham talking about how going into Gotham from the air is no way to go. He should be on the street, on the ground with people. And it cuts to Jim Gordon taking a train on the same day into Gotham just to join the Gotham PD. And he's like, I shouldn't take my family on the train. So it parallels the duality of these characters. And it's just an awesome story that redefined the character. Yeah. And being that it was just four issues, they were able to include both versions with the different coloring, which is something that we'll see later on on this list as well. But we got to get to... One of the Batman stories that I recommend when somebody asks, where should I start with reading Batman? There are three volumes by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. We're talking The Long Halloween, Dark Victory, and Haunted Night. These were my whales for a while, and I did get them all. I love them. I have the Omni. I have the trades. I, I drew the line at the deluxes. I'm trying to be a better husband, so I didn't quadruple dip in these. But... <laughs> Oh my God, these are amazing. The Long Halloween, its that's Batman as the world's greatest detective. It's early on in his crime-fighting career. You get to see all the rogues. You get to see the mob. And it just gets even better with Dark Victory. On a night's okay. I mean, you kind of want to... You don't want to be that guy that doesn't complete the set. But for me, Dark Victory, <laughs> I love it because Robin is my favorite DC character. And you get to see the origin to Robin. Yeah, and I went for the omnibus format. I've owned these absolutes in the past, and they are beautiful, but I like the idea of having all of these collected into just one edition. So one benefit to you for the why the omnibus is a great way to go this route is it has everything in chronological order. Haunted Night is actually two stories, three issues of Haunted Night and Catwoman Win in Rome. So if you're reading these in the right order, you would start with half of Haunted Night, then read Long Halloween, then Dark Victory, then go back to Haunted Night, or you can just read the Omni. It's in the right order. All right. So we've talked about absolutes that had four issues. We've talked about one that had just three issues. What about one that has only one issue? Or really a graphic novel. I get a lot of flack for this online. I have Killing Joke. It's like probably the most cost-effective absolute to procure. It is like, I feel like it's always on sale. And I just feel like it hasn't aged super well, I guess. For me, um, the Killing Joke, it, everyone, a lot of people love it. It's one of the definitive Batman stories. For me, I like Three Jokers a bit more. And this is nice, again, because you get both the old coloring and the recoloring. Yeah, so even though it's just the one issue, the one graphic novel, you get two different versions with the different coloring. For me, it's a must-own because there's never going to be an omnibus of this. It's just one issue. It's Alan Moore goodness, and I like having both. I like having the original, and then I like having the sequel with Three Jokers, just kind of like uh, Doomsday Clock with The Watchmen. Next up, another absolute that I think is a must-own but there's an omnibus, which I'm guessing you probably own now, is Batman Hush. So Hush pairs up Jeff Loeb, who wrote my favorite Batman stories, the ones we just talked about, and pairs it with Jim Lee, who is just arguably one of the Mount Rushmore of comic book artists, one of the best artists out there. And it is an awesome story. It's almost like they said, let's draw a Batman story with every one of his villains. He fights Superman. Everything you've ever wanted to see, see Jim Lee draw Batman do, he gets to draw. And it's an awesome story. And because of that, it feels less like a Jeff Lowe book to me. It feels like what you said, almost an excuse to have Jim Lee draw all yours and his favorite characters. I did end up going for the Omnibus after owning this in the past because the Omnibus has so much more content. All of these follow-up stories that I didn't even know Hush was in. What I will say, though, and this is the hill that I'll die on, if you have the Paul Dini Omnibus... If you have Absolute Hush and you have the Hush Omnibus, that double dips and triple dips a lot. If I only could have two, I would pick the Hush Absolute and the Paul Dini Omnibus. I think those stories are arguably a little bit better, but 
I have all three because I'm a lunatic. No, that's true. I think the Paul Dini stories are the best out of that omnibus. Next up, we have an absolute I don't own, but I don't own because it's not released yet. That is Batman and Son. This had to have come straight from James Gunn. As soon as he announced that his Batman, the Brave and the Bold movie, is going to feature Damien, they solicited a Batman and Son absolute. So there's been two previous Grant Morrison absolutes. So this will be our third dive into Grant Morrison's work on Batman and an absolute that I can't wait to own. Damien's an awesome character and this will be his introduction. So this is kind of the opposite of what we've seen. This had already been collected in the Grant Morrison Batman Omnis, which I can see behind you on your shelf, which they have three volumes of. But this one is taking the, the best content, in my opinion, the stuff from the first volume. And I will say that the Omni is a great route to go down because one, they're all in print and two, the three Omnis collect much more than the three absolutes will. So if you want the full run, which I do, you got to go the Omnis. So Batman Reborn is the start of volume two when Batman is Nightwing and his Robin is Damien. And what I love it is flips the dichotomy of Batman and Robin on its head. Now Batman smiles and he jokes around and you have Robin super serious. That's like a cold blooded killer. And I love their relationship because Damien does not respect Nightwing at first, but he grows to by the end of this book and it is awesome. And for me, the Batman and Robin Batman Reborn stuff is my favorite of the Grant Morrison. Yeah, and it's weird because this absolute was published a while back, but like you said, it's contents from volume two of the Omnibus. And then you have Batman Incorporated, which collects contents from volume three of the Omnibus. So I'm glad to see they're finally giving us an absolute of the original material. Yes, and I will say Batman Incorporated is my least favorite portion of the Grant Morrison Batman stuff. I personally think it's kind of silly. You have like, he outsources Batman around the world. So you get a bunch of silly variations of Batman. I get it, but it's just not for me. It wasn't for me either. I famously dislike Batman by Grant Morrison, although I do like volume one. I'm a, I think Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin, and I liked seeing him as Robin with Dick Grayson as Batman. And now let's get into Batman, The Black Mirror by Scott Snyder and Jacques. This one is famous for having the cover of the Joker that's being made up of a bunch of bats. So this is another book that you should get if you're a big Nightwing fan, because it's another book that is Nightwing as Batman. So I love this book. I read it for the first time last year, and I had to get the absolute, even though it was out of print. What I will say is they are reprinting a deluxe edition this upcoming year. So that's a great accessible way to get in this story. And I love it because it's Scott Snyder's first work on Batman. And I think it segues really good into his court of owl stuff because there's just like parallel themes. It's a really dark story too. If I recall about Gordon's son, I read this again, this was like on a trip to New York comic-con. And when I got home, I just didn't even do a review of it. I just couldn't even think of what I wanted to talk about it. I just remember it being very dark. It is dark. What I like to say is Batman has a son who is Nightwing and Gordon has a son who is this creepy serial killer. I think it's James Gordon. And you get to see these two sons of Gotham and you get to see the way that they react. I like the first half better, which was the stuff done by Jock, which was more about them hunting down a secret society, all of kind of the Court of Owls eventually. But this, the later stuff has Francisco Francavella as the artist and the art changes dramatically. Kind of wish it was Jock on the full, for, full book because Jock was my you know, more preferred artists on the book, but it does get dark and it is a depressing story. Yeah, super depressing. I think that's why I didn't review it. All right, guys, this one is a must have. I prefer the two volume omnibus set, but you have Batman, the Court of Owls, also by Scott Snyder, but this time he's teamed up with the goat, Greg Capullo. Do you like Greg Capullo? Are you a Spawn fan? I'm a huge Spawn fan. Back in the day when I was a kid, I thought that all those covers were Todd McFarlane and it wasn't until later on in life that I was like, holy shit, that was mostly Greg Capullo. So Court of Owls is a story that I love. This was a very personal story to me. It was like my early time reading Batman. And the sad thing about the Absolute is for like five, six years, it was an orphaned Absolute. It was just Court of Owls. So I got yeah. Court of Owls and then they did the Omnis. I think I have trade paperbacks, but I always wanted them. I'm going to be honest. I don't need all of Scott Snyder in Absolute, but I want Court of Owls year one and in game those are the ones i want and they finally announced the sequel death of the family but what i love about court of owls is there's a portion where batman is drugged lost in a labyrinth and greg capullo plays with the comic book medium by slowly turning the page around and around so you're literally flipping the book around and around 
feeling as lost as Batman. And that in the absolute format is the best way to experience it. I remember that. And I think they did that in a Promethea as well, if I recall. They do a lot of funky things in Promethea. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Ninja Funk Bad Music number one. Following the battle at Ninja Funk Dojo and the capture of BB, Bad Music retreats to their headquarters at the Nexus. With the love of Laser Wolf's life as irresistible bait, there's no doubt in Queen Bad's mind that her nemesis will come knocking and she's ready for him. Will Laser Wolf, JPG McFly, and Wolfgang see the trap for what it is or run headlong into disaster? Find out in Ninja Funk Bad Music number one in stores April 17th. Great foreshadowing there. We have another Absolute Edition that has not been released yet. This one's scheduled to come out October 29th of 2024. It's Death of the Family. Not the OG Death in the Family, but from the new 52, Scott Snyder, Greg Capullo. I love this story. It is absolutely insane. It is crazy and i cannot wait to see the twisted art in the absolute format gotta be honest i'm not gonna double dip on this one i've got the omnis it collects the entire run i'm gonna stick with those but moving on we have more grant morrison stuff but this time we're talking arkham asylum so this is the only batman absolute i don't own but luckily it is scheduled for a reprint this year and i own the deluxe edition so i'll probably do a giveaway when i get it but this art is horrific it is twisted it is nightmarish and it is, it's not my favorite story, but it's like, you get it for the art because it is just nightmarish. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of this one either. I did read this one and I couldn't review it either. I just, it went way over my head. I didn't even know where to start trying to talk about this story. That could be said for most Grant Morrison stories though. I feel like, I feel like if you ever say, I don't get this Grant Morrison story. Someone's like, oh, you just got to read it five more times. And you're like, <laughs> All right, guys, another absolute that just recently got a reprint, and I showcased it in a recent haul. We have Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, more Frank Miller goodness. So this is an absolute that I'm split on. It contains four of the best issues ever written on Batman, and it contains four of the worst issues ever written on Batman. So I got, like kind of schooled by my friend. So I didn't own the absolute. I never read Dark Knight Returns. And my my co-host on the channel let me borrow his absolute a few years ago. And I read it and it was amazing. It was as good as everyone said. Usually books don't live up to the hype. This lives up to the hype. And then I go, wait, why is there still half the book left? And he goes, keep reading, man. It gets better. It does not get better. Friends don't let friends read Dark Knight Strikes again. Frank Miller, I don't know what messed him up, but it's the worst art I've ever seen. And it's the worst story I've ever read. Yeah, I always wondered why there was a Dark Knight Returns Absolute and then all of a sudden an Absolute for DK3, the Master Race, but that's because they put DK2 lumped in with this one. I don't know why they did that. I guess they felt like it didn't deserve its own Absolute. But like I mentioned, we have the Dark Knight, the Master Race. This is Frank Miller with Brian Azzarello. Plus you have other creators there as well. But the third iteration from the dark knight's return universe also not anywhere as good as dark knight returns that's going to be a theme for me my favorite absolute by frank miller on batman is year one because the whole thing is good dark knight at least half of it is good the less the rest of them the less you say the better because they are um, i almost feel like he tries to be bad or edgy i don't know it's like he's pranking us like how bad they are sometimes yeah, it's like he just shows you that he doesn't care and he puts it into his work. I'm a fan <laughs> of Frank Miller, but yeah, the OG stuff is the best. Back to some Jim Lee goodness, though. We've got all-star Batman and Robin, the boy wonder. I think I read and reviewed this on the channel. I can't really recall. I definitely read it. I'm not sure if there's a review on there or not. Hopefully not. This is. I think <laughs> this is the worst one. It's so bad they never even finished it. It was supposed to be 12 issues. They gave up. So, like, okay, let me, let me, let me tell you some of the sins of this book. He, he kidnaps Robin the night his parents get murdered, throws him in his car, makes him, he goes to the cave and Alfred's like, oh, can I feed this, this poor orphan? And, and Batman's like, nah, make him hunt rats. That's how he'll learn to be a crime fighter. They go to fight Green Lantern. So they paint the room yellow and have glasses of lemonade. Batman hooks up with the Huntress and says, we leave the masks on. I, I can't, I can't with this book. It's the worst book ever, but pretty art. But it's Jim Lee. <laughs> yes. You're right. You know what? You know what? Forget my argument. All you got to say is, but it's Jim Lee. We had a lot of self-contained stories, a lot of Batman stories. Let's get into some events, more specifically some crisis events. Yeah. So up first, we have Crisis on Infinite Earths. And I'm going to WonderCon this weekend, and Marv Wolfman is going to be there. So you know I'm taking my absolute, and I'm hoping to get it signed. This is a book that I definitely think they should reprint. 
I know Crisis on Infinite Earths hasn't aged like in terms of it being interesting as well as others, but it's where I start reading DC Comics. I almost never read pre-Crisis, and I just think it's bombastic that George Perez art needs to be seen on the biggest size possible, and it's a fantastic book. Yeah, this is one that if they came out with a reprinting, I would collect this in absolute format. I just don't think they're going to do an omnibus because if they include all the tie-ins, which are really unnecessary, you're looking at like three or four volumes. And that would be a th boring three and four volumes of characters that were important 40 years ago, but like have no context to us anymore. Another one by George Perez. This time he teams up with Kurt Busiek. And this time we have the JLA teaming up with the Avengers. I would say for a lot of people, this is probably the number one whale for a lot of people. This was a gift that my wife bought me for hitting a year of sobriety. So it's a very treasured book in my collection. And I don't know if they'll ever reprint it. They did the trade paperback reprint called the Heroes Initiative to raise money for George Perez when after he passed away. But now with those DC Omnis, DC and Marvel Omnis that they announced, maybe it's possible, but it's just like, it's hard. And here, I want to say one more thing. This is not technically an absolute, but it has a slip case. It's the same size as an absolute. But whenever I talk about it as one of my favorite absolutes, I get 30 people in the comments saying it's not an absolute. It is to me. Well, there's going to be a ton of comments asking, where's the absolute Invincible? Where's the absolute Walking <laughs> Dead? Where's the absolute Spawn? Which those are not absolute editions, but they are a very similar format. Moving on to the next one. It's in the name, but I don't know that I would really call this a crisis event. I don't either. If I didn't put it in the crisis section, people would have said something. So Identity Crisis is a crisis in name only. I don't like this story. I was okay with this being the one absolute I didn't own. And I was scrolling through eBay a few weeks ago and I saw one ending in five minutes going for 20 bucks. And I scored a sealed copy for 25 bucks. So that's about the most I'll pay. There is a deluxe edition coming out. It is, it does add context to Infinite Crisis, but it's just such, I don't know, such a problematic story. Yeah, it's a weird book. It's basically how the Justice League deals with sexual assault within their camp. And it's just, it's a very off-putting book, although I did find myself enjoying the story. And that's okay. All right, moving on to the next Crisis event, y'all. We have Infinite Crisis. That's right, they did make an absolute for this. Yes, here's what I'm going to say. I'm an absolute nut, but I'm going to be honest, get the Infinite Crisis omnibus. There are some crisis events like Final Crisis where I don't really like the omnibus because all the tie-ins are unnecessary. For Infinite Crisis, the tie-ins are necessary. There are some key issues like Infinite Crisis Secret Files that should have been in the absolute that they aren't. But it's my favorite event. I like having both. If I want to read just Infinite Crisis, I can. If I want to read the whole event, I can read the Omni. Yeah, for some of you that are watching that may be new to this, so the Absolute Editions typically collect just the main story, and then the Omnibus will have all the extra tie-ins. So as you can see, this only collects the seven-issue main story, and we'll see that with some other event-type Absolutes on this list. But you mentioned it. It's here. It's Final Crisis. Beautiful dark side cover here. More Grant Morrison. This time he's joined by J.G. Jones. So this one they are reprinting pretty soon and has been out of print for a while. I love this story. A lot of people know this on my channel, but Final Crisis was the first DC book I ever read. That should not be your first book. That is <laughs> that is like the worst first book ever. But I was at a bookstore and I saw the cover of Superman holding a dead Batman. How are you not going to pick up that book? The Final Crisis Absolute is amazing. It comes with 3D glasses for the 3D Superman issues, and it is just a phenomenal ride. Better than the Omni because the tie-ins to the Omnis of Final Crisis don't even matter to the story. Yeah, and you really do need to read this to get more context for uh, Grant Morrison's Batman run because a lot of stuff happens within this story that really matters, like Batman being a completely different person in the Grant Morrison Omnis. Yep, 100% true. All right, guys, now we are still in the crisis mode here, but we're switching from the bad stuff, the Justice League stuff, to some Flash goodness, and we've got the Flashpoint Absolute. This is another one that I didn't need because I have Flashpoint in multiple uh, Omnis. I have the Jeff Johns run, which contains Flashpoint. I have the Flashpoint Omnibus, which contains Flashpoint, but I had to get the Absolute as well because I'm collecting them all like Infinity Stones, and the Flashpoint Absolute is fun, and to me, again, the tie-ins to Flashpoint. If you're going to collect Flashpoint, get the Jeff Johns Omnis. That's my vote. 
The Flashpoint Omnibus is not my favorite. All right, so this is kind of what I was talking about here. The next Absolute Edition is the Dark Knight's Metal, which contains the six-issue main story, but it does have some bonus material and other issues as well. I love the Absolutes because it almost feels like the, the slip cases are metal themselves. It's really fun. It's awesome Greg Capullo art, which you want in the large format possible. But I really like the tie-in. So the Omnis are really fun ways to collect these. Yeah, especially for Dark Knight's Metal, you really need the tie-ins to get the whole scope of the story. And we have Dark Knight's Death Metal, which follows up as well. The construction is beautiful. It does feel like graded metal and the texturing they use. It's a beautifully constructed book, but with just seven issues of Death Metal, I think you really need more. And I think that the Omnibus are the way to go. I love Absolute Death Metal. The reason for me is Death Metal was my final event in single issue comics before I transitioned fully to collected editions. So I'm very excited that I own it in the best format possible. And they do look gorgeous next to the next to each other. Like it's such a perfectly constructed pairing totally agree and enough of the dark knight enough of the crisis events let's get on to the man of steel and talk superman absolutes up next is a superman absolute that needs no introduction it is all-star superman to a lot of people this is the definitive story of superman it tells the story of what would the man of steel do if he was doused with a lethal dose of yellow radiation and he was running out of time what would Superman do to the world, do to his loved ones, do to his friends if he was running out of time? And it is an amazing story with gorgeous Frank Quietly art. I've never got the people who weren't a fan of Frank Quietly's art. I've always loved how he draws his characters. Oh, you don't like him? <laughs> I'm not a fan of Frank Quietly. <laughs> oh, okay. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but I, I don't know. I love All-Star Superman. I do think there are better Superman stories, but it is amazing superman story yeah this is like the softer side of superman there's another absolute which is that same vibe that we'll talk about in a moment i like death of superman i like 90s mullet jacked fighting superman so you don't really get that here but it is another side to clark kent i read that for the first time this year death of in return of superman all the way through and oh my god the annuals where it was like dinosaurs that would turn you into a crazy 90s villain was like so hard to get through because i'm not a 90s comics fan I, I am totally a 90s comics fan. All right, guys, the next Absolute Edition might be considered the worst Absolute of all time. Superman for Tomorrow, Brian Azzarello, and Jim Lee. I have not read this, but I read the Wikipedia page, and the story makes no sense. I guess maybe you can say, but Jim Lee again. Maybe that should be like the motto of this video is it's okay <laughs> if the story sucks if you got Jim Lee on the art. The next absolutes on the list are a two-volume set. We've got Superman slash Batman volumes one and two. I've only read volume one. I will say that if you get the two Omnis, they collect much more than the two absolutes. But I will say that only the first Omnibus or the two absolutes are the good parts. What I've read of the second Omnibus of Superman Batman was so mediocre, I sold it. Yeah, I read the Absolute Editions before I started the channel. I remember enjoying the artwork. I mean, you have Ed McGinnis in the beginning. You have these big kind of muscular characters, like I mentioned, that I like with his thick uh, lines and inking. But uh, I don't think I read Volume 2. I did end up selling those for the two Omnibus, which I still haven't read. But moving on to the next book, this is the one I was talking about that's in that all-star Superman vein. It's Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale, Superman for All Seasons. So I loved this book, and The Absolute is a phenomenal way to collect it. The slipcase and the book itself feels like it's canvas. And Tim Sale and Jeff Loeb, one of my favorite duos on comics, and there's just incredible moments. So basically, the story is another origin for the Man of Steel, but it's told through the different seasons of his life, narrated by characters that are both friend and foe. And you get to see a, just a deep dive on him as a character. Yeah, beautiful book by, like you said, two of the greats, Jeff Loeb, Tim Sale. I think this was one of the last absolutes that I read and reviewed on the channel. And I think I heard somewhere that James Gunn is going to be drawing a lot of inspiration from this. Definitely this and All-Star Superman. I recently did a video on all the books that I think they're pulling from for the movies. Next up, we have an absolute that everyone's been clamoring for an Omni or an absolute for for a really long time. That is the Jeff Johns and Gary Frank stuff on Superman. Now, I'm stoked to have this. I would have rather just had a Jeff Johns Superman omnibus that collects all of his work on Superman, not just the stuff with Gary Frank, but the Gary Frank art, man, is unbelievable. So the original solicitation to this book was wrong. It said it was going to collect 
Superman Last Son, but that was done by Andy Kubert. So I think they've updated the solicitation and it's not in there anymore, which makes sense. But this is going to include Secret Origin, which is one of the best origins of Superman. And Jeff Johns just gets the Man of Steel. Yeah, and being that this isn't collected in an omnibus, I'm definitely going to grab this Absolute Edition. So now we're done with the themes and we're going to move to just straight DC Absolute Editions. We have one of the greatest design ones up first, which is The Fourth World Volume 1 and Volume 2 by Jack Kirby. I had the yeah. omnibus and I gave it to my co-host and bought the Absolutes and they are just absolutely stunning. That Jack Kirby art, the king of comics, needs to be seen on the absolute size. Yeah, I'm always jealous when I see this in people's collection. Being that I had the omnibus, I didn't splurge for the absolute edition. I am almost done reading the first volume of the Fourth World Omnibus. It's not as daunting as you would think. It's basically just like the first 10 issues from four different series that Jack Kirby drew and wrote, and they all are interconnected. Oh, yeah, definitely. So when he came to DC Comics, he was like, let me get the four worst selling titles so that I can just tell my sweeping space saga without being bothered. And it's just amazing what he was able to accomplish. Truly one of the greats. Yeah, because I feel like Jack Kirby really pioneered telling a story over multiple issues. Famously, like uh, Behold Galactus was told over three issues, whereas comics were usually self-contained. And then he took it a step further with telling one overall story over four different titles. And if you read the intro, he was a huge fan of collected editions. He envisioned a day where comic books would be collected in oversized hardcovers. I would love to know what Jack Kirby would think of the current state of collected editions. Next up, we have Absolute Green Lantern, Green Arrow, one of the biggest steals I ever got. So I was browsing Barnes & Noble's website at work, and they had this Absolute on sale for $10, and they had two copies left, so I bought two copies of it. It is a phenomenal run that redefined comics. It's the Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams run on Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And trust me, you have to see the, the infamous issue, My Ward is a Junkie in the Absolute Size. Yeah, this is the classic material. This is the dawn of the Bronze Age of comics. So cool that they ended up collecting this in an Absolute. Yeah, so there was a larger version with a slipcase that predated Absolutes. The only difference between that and this is that it doesn't collect... This doesn't collect the Flash issue that that did, but they are coming out with an omnibus this year that I'm so pumped about. All right, we're not done with Frank Miller, but this time it's not really a superhero. We've got the absolute Ronin. From what I know about this book, it's one of the few I don't have, and it is a very hard absolute to get. Frank Miller did a ton of Kung Fu history studying and martial arts movies for his work on Daredevil, and he had to turn it all into a book. And this is like a samurai book or a Ronin book at its very core, and I want it really badly, so I'm hunting for this one. Dang, I did used to own this one back in the day as well. I think I got it just when it came out, and uh, I never really got into it, though. I'm a Frank Miller fan, though, but I don't think I dived into Ronin. But what I do think is essential for anyone's collection, especially because I'm going to go out on a limb and say there will never be an omnibus for this, but you have the absolute Watchmen collecting the entire 12 issue series. This is another book that's very near and dear to my heart. We recently did a video called Every Watchmen Format Ever. We didn't get every format, but we got most of them. And the absolute is one of my favorite ways to collect it. I, it's the largest size. You get to see the nine panel grids done by Dave Gibbons in an amazing format. It has the recoloring and it is a book that everyone should own. It's going to be in print every year. You never have to worry about it being out of print. It's perpetually in print and it is one of the coolest ways to own it. And just like how Three Jokers was a follow-up to Killing Joke, Doomsday Clock by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank is a follow-up to The Watchmen. I feel like Alan Moore is going to see this and put a curse on us. <laughs> Alan Moore hates people messing with his work. I'm a fan of Doomsday Clock. I know that they were never supposed to intertwine those universes, but I'm all about it. Yeah, I think it's more about a story about why Superman is important in comics than it really is a direct Watchmen sequel. It has all the Watchmen characters, but Superman is the core character of this book, and it's awesome to see their interaction. I will say, though, when this was coming out in single issues, there was horrible delays because Gary Frank is yeah. an absolute artist, and it takes time to draw. Reading it in the absolute format, seeing that art oversized, not having to wait three months in between issues is the way to read it. Yeah, that's right. I remember those delays. It was so nice to be able to just read the absolute front to back. I did read and review this one on the channel. Make sure to check it out if you can. Moving on to some more Brian Azzarello stuff. Now, he's kind of had a bad rap on this list so far, but teaming up with Lee Bermejo, they knocked it out the park with the Luther Joker absolute. 
So this is one I haven't read because it's been out of print for a while and I never felt as called to hunt it down as a whale as others. It actually did just come out this Tuesday. So it's on the way from Organic Price Books. Shout out to them. And I'm going to read it for the first time. I'm excited. I've heard good things and I can't wait to read it. All right, guys, if you want a book that you need to read five times to get it, you want to pick up Absolute Multiversity, more Grant Morrison, more Frank Quietly, but Ivan Reyes and Cameron Stewart join them as well. So this is a good follow-up to Final Crisis. Final Crisis wasn't confusing enough for you. Let's make it even more confusing. I call this the story of Grant Morrison mapping out the DC multiverse. It's got one of my favorite characters, Captain Carrot. He's what if Superman was a bunny from another dimension. It has Pax Americana, one of my favorite single issues, and it's an incredible book to read. Though I will say my one gripe is this is the only absolute I know of that doesn't have a ribbon, and I'm salty about that. All right, guys, here's another one that has not been released yet, but I think this is going to be a banger. It's The Absolute Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Mitch Gerard. They're my favorite duo in comics. I got to meet them last year at WonderCon. I own Mr. Miracle in the single issues, the standard size hardcover, the deluxe edition, and I will buy every Tom King book in every format they come out with. And this is one step closer to a woman of tomorrow or up in the sky absolute because this is our first Tom King absolute. And I read this before I took the dive into Jack Kirby's fourth world. And it's so nice to see how they pulled this character from that universe and created this story. Scott free apocalypse, new Genesis. It all gets pulled together for this absolute. And what I'll say though, is it's everything you just mentioned, but it's also a look on marriage and relationships and, and fatherhood. So it has these crazy moments where it's like these galactic gods and monsters. And then it's like, should we order a salad tray for this party? Like, you know, it's got everything big and small. Tom King does like to write about relationships. Next up, we have Green Arrow by Kevin Smith and Phil Hester. So this is one I just got recently. I haven't read it yet. So this is the Kevin Smith work on Green Arrow. I think Green Arrow was dead. And this is the story of how he came back to DC Comics. I have to read it. I'm excited for it because I live in LA and I sometimes go see Kevin Smith live at the cantina. And you know I'm going to get my absolute sign now. Man, I was a huge Kevin Smith fan. Mall Rats was one of my favorite movies of all time. But when I read this, I just couldn't get into it. I don't think I even finished it. That's fair. All right, from Green Arrow to Green Lantern, this is one that you should probably just go ahead and grab the three-volume omnibus, plus they have Green Lantern Core, plus Blackest Night, but Green Lantern Rebirth is an absolute edition by Jeff Johns and EVS. And I will say, of the Green Lantern absolutes, if you want to treat yourself to a double dip of one of them, Rebirth is the least cool one to get. Get get one of the other two, because, you know... You got to have like six formats of Blackest Night. You got to have the Omni You for Jeff Johns. You got to have the Green Lantern Corps. You got to get the Blackest Night Omni and you got to get the Blackest Night Absolute. But Rebirth is like my least favorite part of his run. Then they have the follow-up like you alluded to, Sinestro Corps War, Jeff Johns and Ivan Reyes. Just following that Green Lantern run. Again, you should probably just get the Omnis. Next up, we have Blackest Night. I actually think this is the best of the Green Lantern absolutes to get. There were some issues in Sinestro Cold War that I think were pivotal that were left out that would have made it one of the perfect absolutes. But Blackest Night is awesome. It is like the fifth way I own it. It's the story of zombies invading the DC universe, and it is just awesome. Yeah, because this is some people's favorite DC event, and to get it in the most prestige format, I could see why you would say this was a must-own. All right, guys, moving on to the next one. We have Justice League Origin. This is the new 52 origin by Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. Yes, so I'm not the biggest new 52 fan in hindsight when it was coming out. That was when I was starting comics, and I loved it. I think the Omnis are a great way to go for Justice League. You know, I haven't collected anything else in that run in absolute format. This is probably one of my least favorites. But again, but Jim Lee, so it's fantastic. But Jim Lee, I feel like I did read and review this one on the channel. Uh, I do like the Jim Lee art, but the story doesn't really go anywhere. I think it's another one where the story just ends abruptly. I could be wrong on that one, though. I remember that kind of, but the Omnis are a, a great way to read the stories. Next one up is one that I did own. People love it, but I never got around to reading this one, and I know it's out there in multiple formats. It's the DC New Frontier. This was my number one absolute on my top 10 list. If you're going to collect DC New Frontier, which you should, because it is not just my favorite absolute, it is my favorite DC story. It is one man's love letter to DC. So Darwin Cook was an amazing cartoonist and an amazing comic book writer. And this was his love letter to the characters he loved so much. It's set amongst the backdrop of 
the Cold War in American history, and you get to see a potential origin for the Justice League transitioning from the Golden Age to the Silver Age. And it is just, it has every character, it's drawn perfectly, and it's just, if you want to read one DC story, you should read this. I definitely got to check that one out. The next one is a classic. We have The Absolute Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross. This is a timeless story, a dark look at a potential future. It shows why Superman is so important. I often, I've, I've heard this interpretation and I relate to it. I feel like it was a response to the 90s era of comics that you love so much. Magog is like your titular 90s character, you know what I mean? And Superman right. has to come out of retirement to show these new, grungy, edgy 90s superheroes how it's done. Yeah, it was almost like going against the X-Men or like the New Mutants or X-Force type of like Gen X heroes. Now, this one, I don't know if it was technically an absolute edition. I remember it being like deeper than most of the other ones, but it's Justice League, the world's greatest heroes, also by Alex Ross, but written by Paul Dini. This is kind of a funny book for me. I bought it on accident when I was first getting into comics. I was trying to buy one that we'll talk about later called Absolute Justice. I didn't realize that Alex Ross has a book called Justice and Alex Ross has a book called Justice League, the world's greatest superheroes. So this is an absolute that is magazine size. So it is wider than the traditional absolute. But oh my God, this is my favorite Alex Ross absolute. Everyone says Kingdom Come. That's probably because they haven't read this yet. These are one-off stories written by Paul Dini, who's famous for doing Batman the Animated Series, who truly gets these characters. And they're one-off stories that show why these characters are important. There's a moment in the Batman story where Batman helps a young boy break the, cy the cycle of violence and crime. There's a Superman story where he spends the book not fighting aliens, but giving food to Africa and to people that need help. There's a Wonder yeah. Woman story where she learns that she needs to be more than just a superhero, but be a human. And a JLA story that shows why every member of the League is important. It's incredible, and I absolutely adore it. Now, I love Paul Dini, but the Alex Ross interiors, he could have told this story by himself without words. It's that good. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I, I, you could look at this as like these pages of these characters in their most heroic moments and not even need words to love it. Well, you just foreshadowed the next one on the list. It is absolute justice. It's Alex Ross, Jim Kruger, Doug Braithwaite. Any Alex Ross book should be an absolute. And I think that goes without saying everyone would, would agree with that. I will say though, while I was trying to buy Justice and accidentally bought the previous one, I wound up liking the previous one a lot better. So Justice, the story is cool. It is a fully contained story as opposed to little one-off moments, but it is, it's not as good as Kingdom Come and it's not as good as Justice League World's Greatest Superheroes. Yeah, I was going to say, that was actually a pretty good mess up when you bought that, the world's greatest superheroes. All right, guys, next on the list, this one's kind of an obscure one, I would say. It's Absolute Danger Girl. It's by Andy Hartnell and J. Scott Campbell. Danger Girl... I know nothing about her. This is one of the rarest absolutes because they only printed 3,012 copies. And I don't know. My, my friend just got it. He got a copy and he read the first issue and like an alligator bites off her pants. So it's that's all you got to know about the story. You know, I feel like if that doesn't sell it, I don't know what will. Yeah, this is one I did own back in the day as well. And it's J. Scott Campbell drawing sexy ladies. I mean, what more can you ask for? This next one I didn't even know existed. It's Wonder Woman, Gods and Mortals. It's by George Perez. And I think it just wasn't on my radar because I do have all the omnis. It is a gorgeous absolute. I'll show it right here. It's gold and reflective and shiny. Like it is a breathtaking, oh, wow. breathtaking yeah. absolute. So the reason I got this is because they haven't had all three George Perez Omnis in print in quite some time. They, it's one of those things where they'll keep reprinting the first one. So I asked my friends, I did a, a stream recently on Near Mint's channel about what DC books should be evergreen. I said Gail Simone's Wonder Woman. All these other people like jumped down my throat and said George Perez is the definitive run on Wonder Woman. So I was like, okay, I want to read it. But I figured better to dip my toe in the absolute than three out of print omnis. Yeah, that thing looked gorgeous. I didn't realize that they printed it like that. And the last absolute editions, at least for ones that are already released or soon to be released, we have the two volumes of Wonder Woman by Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chiang. This is gorgeous art. So this is the new 52 run on Wonder Woman. It is really good. But, oh, my God, I got a steal. My friend texted me from another state and said, yo, I found Wonder Woman Volume 1 at an Ollie's. You want it for, like, 10 bucks or whatever it was? And I was <laughs> like, I can't say no. So this is an awesome book. Uh, the Omni, the Omnibus does contain the same stuff and is in print. 
So if you want to get the absolute, you should get it now because it's getting harder and harder to find. All right, guys, before we get into the canceled absolute editions, let's give you the details on this giveaway because one of you guys could win any absolute that you want as long as it's in stock and shipping. Yeah, so you can't say I want out of print Danger Girl or out of print Promethea, you know, it's got to be one JP can order. So this is what I asked you to do to like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to not only my channel, but the brave and the boys as well. And comment below. What is your favorite absolute edition? And what we're going to do is in a few days, once the comments start to dwindle down, we'll select a random comment using some type of random gener name generator. And then we'll reply to your comment to let you know that you won. But be careful because back in the day, there were scammers and bots that would try to say you won giveaways. I'm pretty sure that they've all given up for now. So make sure that it's genuinely my YouTube channel that's replying to you. You might have to turn on notifications or your email notifications or just check back on this video within about a week or so to see if we replied to your comment below. Yeah, that was awesome of Organic Price Books to offer that. They know I love absolutes and they know that I want more people to collect absolutes. So they're letting you get the absolute of your choice. We talked about doing, what if we did a book, you know, we picked one, but we want you to pick the book that you want. And just in case you do win, we will never ask you to pay for anything. The shipping will be on us. The book is free. So don't fall for any scams. And with that being said, let's jump into the unfortunate canceled absolute editions. So there are a few absolutes that have been talked about or been solicited and then were sadly canceled. The first one is kind of a strange one. It was absolute art of Adam Hughes. I think they were debating dipping their toes into doing absolute art editions. Maybe they just switched over to artist editions instead. But sadly, we never got that amazing Adam Hughes art. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, we don't have absolute art books. That would be a cool thing to try. But like you said, maybe they switched it to a different format. This next one, though, Batman got them by Gaslight. And they just have recently released a premium format statue of this by Sideshow. So it would have been nice to get those paired together. We got that statue and we got the animated movie, I think, last year also. I know there's a deluxe edition of this. I got to be honest. I'm not the biggest fan of Gotham by Gaslight. You know what I mean? For me, I was happy to have one last absolute I needed to collect, you know? But yeah, it's like, what if Batman fought Jack the Ripper back in the day? And it's like, it's it's okay. Yeah, kind of niche. I don't know. It's an Elseworlds tale. Maybe they just didn't have enough confidence in it. The next one up is kind of weird, though. It's Fables. Now, I think they had an oversized hardcover set that has been long out of uh, out of print. And then they had soft cover compendiums. There was going to be an absolute. What do you think went down here? I know that the relationship between DC and the creator deteriorated. Um, and I know that they do a lot of work. They probably do a good amount of sales with the box sets. They do those box sets of the compendiums. I think maybe they got cold feet because of how many volumes it would have been to collect. There's a lot of fables and it would have been a lot of absolutes. All right. And the last one that has been solicited or talked about and canceled has been Absolute Flash Rebirth collecting the six issue series. Which would have been a nice parallel to the Absolute Green Lantern Rebirth. I don't know why they didn't do this, but they did do the Omnis, which is a great way to collect it. And, you know, one less absolute I have to buy. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. When an absolute gets canceled, you're really just thankful these days. One less you got to hunt down. But wow, man, Jake, thank you so much for coming on the channel and helping us count down every single absolute. You brought a wealth of knowledge on the subject, being a huge absolute collector and having read most of this as well. Where can they find you again? Let them know about your channel and what you got going on. Yeah, thanks again, man. Uh, so I'm Jake from The Brave and the Boys. We have a YouTube channel. We're on TikTok as The Brave and the Boys. We got a Discord and Instagram. We're on all the socials. We love comics. We do a lot of like top 10 lists for different characters and different themes to help you find what books you should try. And we just love sharing this awesome medium with you guys. All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay minty fresh. Peace.